Has your chronic illness made it difficult to continue working in the traditional way? Want to learn how to find and create flexible remote work that both accommodates your chronic illness and generates an income? Join the Patients Getting Paid membership, a community of chronicpreneurs where people just like you find workshops and trainings, weekly updated condition-specific gigs, twice-monthly coaching calls, co-workings, accountability, and the kindest community to support you on your path to make money while working from anywhere and taking good care of yourself. Learn more or join us at patientsgettingpaid.com. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Heart of Healthcare podcast. This is your host, Hallie Tecco. Thanks for joining us. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Dr. Ingrid Murra, a Harvard-trained orthodontist and the founder and CEO of Two Front. Ingrid, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So much of healthcare has moved online since COVID with virtual visits up 38x from pre-pandemic and specialties in mental health, general health, endocrinology up the most. I'm curious if you're going to start with how this tectonic shift to telehealth impacted dentistry. Absolutely. So obviously with dentistry, it's it's a manual specialty. So if you do need a cavity filled or a checkup, there does have to be that in-person visit. That said, the there are certain specialties like orthodontics, which have gone a little bit too far in a different direction with no in-person visits by a doctor. But there are technologies now that allow you to have significantly fewer in-person visits in dentistry. In general dentistry, there's now kind of this one medical there's a couple companies that are doing this one medical approach of being able to chat with your dentist if you're having any pain. But at the same time, you know, you still need to come in in person for those x-rays and for that in-person checkup. So like a hybrid model is where yep. it's going. Yep, exactly. And so how is the booming, like within, uh, you said orthodontics. So what I see constantly, and I don't know if they can tell that I have some crooked teeth, but um, these D to Z invisible aligners companies, I'm getting tons of ads for them. And I have been getting these ads for years. So obviously there's either venture dollars going into this or they're making real money in in doing these like virtual invisible aligners, like Invisalign. Yep. But you say that it's actually ruining people's teeth and maybe harming their overall health. Can you say a little bit more about that? (laughs) Yep. Um, You're definitely opening up a little bit of a can of worms here. So I'll try to keep it short. So I'm an orthodontist. I started my residency at the Harvard Dental School in Orthodontics in 2015, which was the first year that Smile Direct Club was uh, launched. And they were the very first mail order liner company. So at first I saw these advertisements, I saw my friends getting their teeth straightened in the mail. And I was like, wow, is this the industrial revolution? Do we not need orthodontists anymore? (laughs) Did I just spend 20 years of my life becoming an orthodontist, getting like massively in debt and I'm not needed anymore? Long story short, fast forward six months of like literal 18 hour days in orthodontic residency. And I learned very quickly that you very much need an orthodontist when it comes to straightening your teeth. I basically learned that straightening teeth with clear liners and braces, either way, you still need to know how to move teeth healthily, efficiently, and into their most beautiful position. And there's no AI that's replacing that. Clear liners are this incredible new tool that allows us to move teeth. But in short, you need an orthodontist. So basically what's happening out there is there's only 12, if we're just talking about the United States, there's only 12,000 orthodontists in the country, 200,000 dentists. So 22 years ago, when Invisalign first launched, they basically were like, okay, we're going to empower general dentists to be orthodontists now that it's tech enabled. And, you know, really um, kind of noble approach of general dentists can move very simple cases. 
So fast forward to 2015, Venture got into this world of mail order aligner companies and said, guess what? This is tech enabled. You don't need a dentist or an orthodontist. <laughs> and that's kind of where... Well, they didn't consult you before making this decision. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. No consulting whatsoever. Um, and obviously the problem... Did you have braces yourself? I did have braces. Um, I'll tell my story in a second. I want to hear the rest of what you're going to say. <laughs> okay. So long story short, it's not a one-time procedure. It's not like you're going in getting a cavity or like going in to your dermatologist and like getting Botox or something. It generally takes two years to straighten your teeth. So most, uh, you, know, you know, a couple of these companies launched and basically it was too late by the time that people realized that they were in a really bad position and their teeth were being straightened by these technicians really in Eastern Europe who are 18 years old, moving teeth digitally, don't know how to move teeth. Wow. And it was a disaster. So, wow. you know, just a personal story. I started practicing in New York as an orthodontist in 2018. And I saw a patient who was one of the very first mail order liner company patients. She had been wearing liners for three and a half years. And she was like, I don't know what's happening. Like I've been wearing my aligners. I'm such a good patient. I'm wearing them 22 hours a day. <sighs> Obviously I knew what was happening took some x-rays, took a look at her roots, and her roots were so short from improper movement via aligners that I couldn't even help her because she was at a risk of losing her teeth. Wow. That's terrifying. How many patients do you think have a similar story? Are we talking like a few dozen or are, we, are you thinking hundreds or thousands? Oh, it, it's thousands. I mean, there's entire Twitter accounts about um, specific aligner companies basically um, sharing horror stories. Certain ones of these mail order aligner companies make you sign an NDA that if things go wrong, you're not allowed to post anything on social media. Wow. Wow. And people are signing them and they people have people are they, signing they are, them and they're stuck. Thinking that it's terms and conditions, normal terms and conditions, not even realizing that they're signing NDAs. Yeah. So what's going to happen to these companies? From a public market standpoint, one of them, their stock is down 95%. A couple of the other companies are pivoting, realizing like, hey, you actually need a professional trying to figure out the business model so that professionals are involved, but they can still grow a large direct-to-consumer company. If you want my real opinion. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do want your real opinion. <laughs> you can't get rid of the professional. Like you can't get rid of the provider. You really want someone who understands the fundamentals of teeth health to be there for you while you're moving your teeth. That said, there are so many incredible ways to empower the provider to deliver consumerized healthcare with a better experience, but it's about empowering the provider, not removing the provider. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like this is a lesson we're learning across healthcare. And I, I want to hear about Two Front and what you're doing differently. But before we dive into that, I do want to dish a little bit more just about the industry. And obviously there have been some bad players within you know the venture-backed world, but dentistry for a long time has been problematic in certain areas, right? Like riddled with lawsuits, um, health issues, unprofessional work, the trust, the level of trust between patients and dentists. Like this is not a, a, a perfect, we're not starting from a place with perfect rosy experiences for everyone. What do you see as kind of some of the, the biggest issues facing the industry besides these sketchy <laughs> um, digital health companies? Like besides that, what are just some basic issues that you want to overcome? Or you want to see the industry overcome? So three things come to mind, insurance, student debt, and creating more transparency into healthcare the way that web into dental healthcare the way that webmd has so starting with insurance a lot of dentists have to make and on and doctors too medical doctors have to make decisions based off of what insurance covers that's not good for the industry you know just for an extreme example i have an anesthesiologist friend who says He's learned how to deliver the best care to his patients under surgery, but insurance doesn't cover it. So he can't even suggest it because the patients can't afford yeah. it and he won't get paid. Same thing happens in dental. So there has to be a massive overhaul on how insurance pays doctors and how patients are getting covered for their dental services. Two, student debt. I went to NYU for my dental school. 
the average general dentist who is graduating after four years of dental school at 26 years old from NYU Dental has over $700,000 of student debt. And that dentist is graduating and making an average of $86 an hour in Manhattan. So it just doesn't add up. And it forces dentists to make decisions out of scarcity, just trying to pay back their loans. You know, that's that's five to six thousand dollars a month of loans that they've got to pay indefinitely. And then transparency. You know, a lot of us have transparency into our healthcare, our medical healthcare. We have WebMD, everything is Googleable. You know, when you go to your dentist, you kind of just have to trust, like, oh, I have a cavity. I've got three cavities. <laughs> I yep. need a root canal. We can empower patients to actually fundamentally understand and be able to look into their teeth with really good records and some very basic education to trust their dentist and collaborate with their dentist. That's an interesting one because I I feel like I'm often hearing stories of people who have a diagnosis from a dentist and then go to another dentist and it's a completely different diagnosis. Like how much of this is like consistent? That is just, it's a hard thing to diagnose cavities, whatever. It's a hard thing to diagnose versus maybe some dentists leaning into a diagnosis because it's profitable. So it's actually, it's a little bit less black and white than it actually seems because different dental schools teach to basically drill cavities at different times. So Mm. the the very basic 101 of how a tooth works is you have an enamel shell, a hard enamel shell, which is a crystalline structure, which basically surrounds your tooth. And inside the crystalline structure, you have what's called dentin, which is basically this tubular layer where what happens when you get cavities is the bacteria releases acid and that acid eats away that enamel. And when the acid eats away that enamel, if it gets down to the dentin layer, then you need to have a cavity filled because basically what happens is it's a rapid path to get to the center of your tooth, which can lead to a root canal. But if it's in the enamel layer, you actually don't have to drill your tooth and have a cavity filled. You can actually remineralize it with enamel toothpaste or hydroxyapatite toothpaste and not have to get that cavity filled. So a lot of times when I hear stories about someone saying, hey, I went to my dentist and they told me I had seven cavities. You don't have seven cavities. You have seven teeth that probably are being demineralized that need to be remineralized, not filled. Interesting. So I have a, so, so I'll just give you my quick, like dentist history. So growing up, my dentist was my stepmom's ex-husband because he gave us like the family deal. Right. Um, so it's kind of an interesting <laughs> dynamic, but I went to him for all my dentistry, for my braces, which I had for several years. And I was, I was bad at wearing the retainer afterwards. And so while I think my teeth improved quite a bit cosmetically, I was, you know, they, they ended up getting crooked again after high school and I no longer had, you know, access to the same dentist. And so I ended up doing Invisalign, you know, a few, a few years out of college and, you know, Invisalign is one of those things where you really have to wear it. You know, this, you really have to wear it you know, 22 hours a day or whatever. But when I started it, I was, it was when I was starting to date my now husband. And so I was actually very bad at wearing it because I didn't want to always have it on. I wanted to be able to make out with him. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I just like, I was going out a lot. I didn't want to have to wear these. And so I was a terrible Invisalign uh, patient. And so it didn't work for me then. And then I did it again maybe at the beginning of the pandemic, I was just like, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I've been married now for 10 years. <laughs> uh, no one's going to see me. Um, and so now I'm a very good, I'm, I've, I've finished and I, my teeth look exactly how I've always wanted them to look. Um, I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, on the patient as well. Uh, certainly you have to have the right provider who's ensuring that your teeth are moving in a healthy way. But on the patient side, you, you have to be committed because it's one thing to like want the outcome. It's another thing to commit to wearing something in your mouth at all times is a pain and they're not oh, easy yeah. to do. Oh yeah. yeah. 100%. And by yeah. the way, the average 30 to 40 year old nowadays is going through orthodontics two to three times in their lifetime. So that's, it's <laughs> okay. not just you. Okay. That's good to know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, um, and during the pandemic, Invisalign actually grew from a 20 to a $50 billion company. Wow. <laughs> so everyone had that same idea. 
We'll be right back after the break. We all struggle with feeling like there's not enough time in the day to be productive personally or professionally. We all struggle to make our time matter. It's time to take control. It's time to start investing in the corporation of you. At Athena, they've helped over 700 ambitious professionals achieve more by connecting them with best-in-class globally remote executive assistants. Athena executive assistants go beyond basic administration tasks. They help you make time matter through the art of delegation. They believe delegation is the superpower of all highly successful people. And your personal EA will help you get there. Your EA is a one-on-one long-term partner to help you achieve your personal and professional goals. Take back your time. Join the waitlist at athenago.com. That's athenago.com. So why is dentistry like seemingly outside of medicine? Why do we treat the teeth and gums separate from the rest of the body? Why does it require a separate insurance, separate medical schools? Like wh- explain this. Like what's the history here? <laughs> so so I'll tell you what I know. I'm definitely not an expert here. I mean, I, I literally like a week ago saw a meme about how like your teeth and your eyes are considered separate from your healthcare, which is just like a hilarious phenomenon that like that's the way that it is now. Nowadays, it shouldn't be actually. It really shouldn't be. It should all be under one system. It should all be under one healthcare. If you have medical care, you should be also getting eye care and teeth care. What's happening is basically when you go to dental school, the first two years of dental school are essentially pre med. Like if you're working in someone's mouth, and some some dental schools even combine, you know, like like Harvard Medical School, the first two years of Harvard Dental School, you're just with the medical school kids over there. Columbia is the same way. Um, the last two years of school in, in dental school are much more like manual with your hands, like learning how to drill teeth, learning how to do root canals and crowns and you know, all the different things like that patients need over the course of their lifetime as a dentist, but it shouldn't be separate because you do, dentists learn the same thing that you learn in medical school. And then they just get an additional specialty, just like a dermatologist gets an additional specialty. But ultimately you have to know the same thing when you're working with the human body. So do you think it's doing a disservice though, that it's separate? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all the same body and, and you want anyone working in the human body. They all have to know the same thing, which means that you should be insured the same way. Yeah, I agree. And it feels, it it just feels like the experiences, there's a lot we can learn kind of across specialties. So tell us about Two Front and what you're doing to serve and improve this industry. So, um, like I was saying earlier, it was, it all started in 2015 when I had just spent 20 years of my life becoming an orthodontist. I was a little bit freaking out about seeing all these mail order liner companies. I also had just gone through dental school and I was like, how come I never learned how to move teeth with Invisalign? Like I know dentists that I know are moving teeth with Invisalign. Like what's happening here? Maybe it's easier than I thought. Long story short, six months into residency, I learned how complex it is to move teeth in three dimensions, healthily, stably, efficiently, and be able to give patients a good experience and good results. And I realized, wow, okay, no one should actually be moving teeth besides an orthodontist because it took me three years of just learning how to move teeth to actually feel comfortable to tell my friend or my mom, hey, I can actually move your teeth for you. Um, I can actually be your orthodontist, you know? And, And the problem is, is that these tech companies came to dentists and said, hey, this is now easier. You don't have to use braces. You can use clear liners and you can move people's teeth for them without actually having to go through an orthodontic training. The problem is people just don't know what they don't know, and the liability ultimately falls on the provider. I'll give you another example, like an analogous example. Same friend who's an anesthesiologist, he tells me that this company has come to him and said, hey, you can now do some many forms of neurosurgery. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, who's the liability on? Is it on this company or is it on you? Just because a tech company tells you you can be doing something does not mean that you should. So fast forward, 
to where we are now. And most providers of clear liners in the world, most people who are straightening their teeth with clear liners are not getting it done by an orthodontist. And to get the highest quality care, to really get good results, you really should be seen by an orthodontist. Orthodontists at the same time are the number one most in-debt specialist uh, or professional in the country. Of the top 50 professionals, orthodontists are number one. They have between seven hundred to $800,000 of student debt. And the practices that they're typically working at are braces focused because most of the brick and mortar practices out there were built for kids. So the jobs out there aren't great. They're not learning modern orthodontics outside of their residency. And they're not even qualifying for bank loans because they're so in debt. So what we're doing is we basically at TrueFront built this operating system where we connect these independent orthodontists to these local dental offices. And we give them the tools and the team to actually be able to serve their whole community of dental offices. So this ranges from a suite of scheduling tools to asynchronous consultations and payments and patient communication and patient monitoring so that one orthodontist can actually remotely run their practice and go into the dental office once a month to run this hyper-efficient Invisalign practice, which then empowers the dentist to not only deliver their patients the highest quality care, specialist-led with a digital experience, but also be able to make passive income. Um, And then the ultimate winner here is obviously the patient who's getting the highest quality care affordably from their dental office. Like how often are they seeing the dentist? Whenever, uh, how often is the patient seeing the orthodontist? Yeah. Whenever they need to. So so what we do when we partner an orthodontist with a dental office is we give them the tools to schedule them whenever they want. Okay. So with Invisalign, as I'm sure you remember, you know, we give patients all of their aligners up front, and then we have the orthodontist monitor them virtually every two weeks. And if ever a patient needs to come in, let's say a button comes off or the aligners are no longer fitting them, the orthodontist will just say, hey, Sarah, I'd love to see you next time I'm there. Can I, I'm going to schedule you for two weeks from now. And they'll schedule them flexibly through our operating system. Okay. So it's making the existing process where, I mean, I was going in every two weeks to get uh, my liners checked on. It's making that a, more efficient and more convenient for the patient. Totally. Like I would say that we've eliminated 80 to 90% of in-person visits because we give you the scan device where you're scanning your teeth, you're sending a record of how your liners are fitting to your orthodontist. And they're saying like, Hey, everything looks great. You don't need to come in. So how many dentists are using this today? So we just raised our seed round back in December. We're live in 10 offices in Los Angeles. And we now in the next eight weeks are onboarding 100 dentists here in LA. Amazing. And you plan to expand nationally. Yep. National is on track for next year. Yeah. So we all face naysayers in healthcare. I'm curious what the biggest roadblock you faced in your work so far. The hardest thing is changing someone's behavior. (laughs) And so um, as we kind of figured out our operating model, I realized that the name of the game was don't try to change anyone's behavior, specifically dentists. So for dentists, you know, orthodontists are already working at seven to eight different jobs, you know, traveling, seeing patients, but really they're not empowered to be delivering the highest quality care, which is what we're doing with our operating system. And by giving them the control and flexibility to schedule patients, how they want to schedule them. For dentists, the hardest part has been just getting in front of them, honestly, and and basically pitching them a whole new way of doing things, which is completely hands-off. Dentists are used to making money by using their hands. And when we partner with dentists, we say, you actually have a space and you already have a patient base. You can, you actually don't have to do the Invisalign and learn how to be an orthodontist. You can actually just bring in a specialist and collect, collect revenue that way. And so we've learned that just calling a dentist like with a sales team is impossible <laughs> because their front desk is like literally paid to reject anyone who's trying to sell them anything. And so our method has been, hey, I'm going to build a community locally and basically invite all these dentists to a regional dinner series. Really nice dinner. We're going to have a bunch of really um, important people in the community there speaking and who trust to front. And that's how we're going to basically show them the product. So higher touch point. 
Yeah. 100%. Just not, yeah. Yeah. I think when I think about the industry, I mean, the cottage industry that is dentistry, I'm thinking of someone who is trying to make, make it work both professionally as a dentist and as a small business owner, right? Yep. Like you're running, you're, you're literally running a business and I don't know how many business classes you're required to take in, in dentistry school, but I'm assuming zero. zero. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> so, so here you are kind of like all of a sudden, you know, just recognizing that you have a staff that you need to hire, train, pay taxes for them. There are a lot of pieces there. I wonder, you know, in dentistry, how, how that has impacted, I mean, right? Like uh, some specialties you're working at a hospital, you're working in the nonprofit sector. I, I would imagine that most physicians, the majority of physicians are, maybe that's not true, working for a nonprofit. Many physicians, right, are working for a nonprofit health system. And that's just not true for dentists. Most dentists are working for themselves. Yep, 80%. 80% are yeah. small business owners. And how come it- we haven't had consolidation or dentistry change that have, have actually been successful? Yeah, it, it's a really good question. So, so there's just, there's a fierce determination. There, there's a couple of factors at play. There's a fierce determination to want to be independent, want to be your own business owner, to not be fireable and to be able to deliver care the way you want to deliver it. In dentistry, especially, there is a really bad reputation where if you were if you work for one of these roll-ups or what are called dental service organizations, DSOs, you know, conglomerates of, of dental offices ran by a centralized management team, that they push production. And so what that means of pushing production is, hey, you've got to do at least 16 crowns this week. But what if you don't have a patient pay- base that needs crowns? <laughs> And then dental school, unfortunately, operated the same way. They're like, you've got to do 20 of this to graduate, but this is your patient base. What if they don't have this? What if they don't need this? And so it's kind of the same thing in these roll-ups where you're kind of forced to kind of go against your ethics a lot of times, you know, to to keep up and, and build the business. And it's not good for the patient, obviously, and it's not good for the dentist morale on top of just not being a business owner anymore. So there's there's a reputation against just not wanting people just not wanting to be associated with it. Yeah. You'd rather work for yourself than a, a private equity roll up. So what do you think's next for dentistry? I mean, beyond kind of the work that you're doing in the cosmetic aligner space, what are some other trends that we're seeing uh, where technology can be helpful? Yeah, I think two big things. I think technology to empower the provider, the dentist to deliver better patient care is always at the forefront, whether that's the experience through, you know, one company, the forefront is Next Health, which really, you know, it provides a really great digital experience and that one medical like experience that patients expect nowadays, you know text reminders, the ability to schedule and reschedule on your own, um, a patient portal. Um, so that's definitely at the, at the forefront is driving a better experience. I think a place that's been missed is what we were talking about earlier, which is transparency into your actual uh, dental care, into your actual personalized health care, where you can really understand what needs to be done to what do you need to do to maintain good oral health? How do you not go to the dentist and be surprised? You know, I'm sure you've heard so many people that have said, I just avoid the dentist altogether because I don't want bad news. But what if you actually knew how to get ahead of your health care and how to not be surprised by bad news? So I think really taking that preventative care instead of reactive approach that has plagued medicine for the longest time, but now people are trying to get ahead of medical care with preventative care, that same shift needs to happen in dental care. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think we have payment models for that though. Yep. Right. Like if a dentist, it's a fee for service model, they're making more, the more problems someone has. So how do you equip the dentists who are, who genuinely care about the health of someone's teeth and want to, you know, support them with prevention with making sure that they can stay in business? Yeah, it's a complicated problem. Um, You know, right now, dentists just tell patients, just brush your teeth and floss, and that's the best you can do. But that's actually not the case. And it's not that dentists are just withholding information. They actually don't even know a lot of the information. So I learned in orthodontic residency all about how the position of your teeth and the position of your bite actually affects your long-term 
oral health. And you can actually save $25,000 to $30,000 over the course of your lifetime by just having straight teeth and a healthy bite. So when I learned that and I started to learn about, oh, if you actually have crowding, which is the number one orthodontic complaint, it's not just an aesthetic concern that can actually cause more cavities. It can cause recession, which is the only way to solve it. It's irreversible. The only way to solve it is with a surgery down the line. If we just told patients that the the position of your teeth and the health of your bite really affects your long-term dental care then that's a huge step in preventative health care, which we're trying to push and educate our dentists on. What about these um, these self-made bite guards that are becoming popular? I highly recommend that no one gets those. And I know you can find them at Walgreens. You can order them online. There's now mail order, there's now mail order bite companies that help you make these yourself. The problem with these is that by changing the position of how your teeth fit together, you are actually changing your bite. And so if you don't have a well-made bite guard, you're literally shifting the way your teeth fit together. And the reason why is because your teeth are surrounded by a kind of bone called alveolar bone. Every other bone in your body is hard. It calcifies by the time you reach a certain age, by the time you reach puberty. But alveolar bone, is it's moldable and it can move. And it's the whole reason why teeth can move. And it's because we're, we, your, your alveolar bone basically makes it so that your teeth can move up and down and resist forces. So the problem with these self-made bite guards is that you're actually moving the position of your teeth. And when you move the position of your teeth into an improper position, it can cause so many problems ranging from not being able, first of all, a huge aesthetic concern, which is what most people realize at first is like suddenly my teeth don't fit together well. Two, you can have difficulty chewing. And most importantly, you can cause TMJ problems and you can even cause chronic headaches by putting your jaw into the incorrect position. Oh my gosh. Okay. So avoid, avoid at all costs. <laughs> avoid. Yeah. What else, what else do we need to be avoiding? <laughs> Anything um, else that needs to be on our radar? Any sort of TikTok trend. <laughs> okay. I hate it. to say it like, yeah. like self charcoal, teeth, charcoal ones, toothpaste, like- avoid, like, okay. you know, it's, it's not avoid. It's not gonna, it's not gonna damage your teeth. It's just not going to help your teeth. So you know, it's, it's always the money. Um, The biggest thing that I've seen in the past year or two to avoid is I've seen these kids take nail files and file (gasps) down their own teeth. (laughs) Oh, that's terrifying. (laughs) Oh my God. And like, I I feel like it sounds obvious, but like, I'm also just so immersed in dental. Your teeth teeth don't grow back. Is there anything else you want, uh, you want to share let people know about uh, the work that you're doing? Oh my God. There's so much that I want people to know about dentistry as a whole. Like even this, like talking about, maybe we talk really quickly about like the difference between like getting veneers or, and straightening your teeth. Like if you have yeah. to choose, cause there's such a, like a, a, like a social media trend towards like these veneers and like people just need to know what it actually means. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing I learned just on our call is that, you know, Invisalign can be more than just cosmetic. It can be, or or straightening your teeth is more than cosmetic. It can actually be good for your tooth and gum health, which was kind of new to me. Maybe you can kind of explain the difference between cosmetic things that you can do and those that you probably shouldn't do versus like tooth health, because there's, everybody wants to not have their teeth fall out. (laughs) <laughs> as they age, right? Like yeah. the teeth health is important to everyone. Cosmetic stuff is just like personal preference, but it, are there things that, you know, we should just kind of keep in mind as we're making decisions, whether it's for cosmetic or health reasons? Yeah, absolutely. So, so obviously the reason that clear liners blew up is because people saw the cosmetic outcome of, Hey, if I straighten my teeth, they're going to look better, <laughs> which is, um, which is great if you don't have to go through braces. But what a lot of people don't realize is first of all, to move your teeth into the right position, you actually have two thirds of your tooth structure, your root underneath your gums in your bone. And so to actually move your entire tooth, to move to, to move your entire tooth, the two thirds underneath and your crown above, and to move them with clear aligners in a way that is effective, you need to have an orthodontist. It just goes back to having an orthodontist who can move your teeth stably. So, you know, a lot of people think if you have retain, if you wear, if I wear my retainers or my teeth are going to stay in the correct position, 
But if your teeth weren't moved to the correct position initially, they're not going to stay. The difference is called tipping versus torquing. Clear, clear liners without an orthodontist, you can tip the crown of your tooth into the right position, but it's going to move right back to where your root is. And even if you are your retainers, it's just going to have a propensity to go back to where it is in the bone. Mm. So the reason why this is important is because if you move your teeth into the right position, so if you have a straight teeth, and a healthy bite, which orthodontists call a class one occlusion. So if your teeth fit together like a puzzle, this is actually one of the best things you can do for the long-term health of your teeth. And it sounds pretty obvious once you think about it, but if your teeth fit together well, then every time you're eating, every time you're talking, you're not clenching your teeth, you're not hitting your teeth in a position that's affecting the surrounding structures in a way that it's negatively affecting them, whether that's your gums or your joints or headaches. A lot of chronic headaches have to do with bad bites. And so I would say when it comes to preventative oral health care, you know, what we're doing at Tufren is we're introducing what's called the annual preventative checkup. Teeth move every single day because you have muscles in your tongue and muscles in your cheeks and you have ions in your saliva and your salivary glands are underneath your tongue. And so all these things that these ions are literally moving your teeth, especially in women, we have estrogen that is moving our teeth every single day. And so by, by having an annual preventative checkup, and digital orthodontic assessment once a year to evaluate if the position of your teeth is affecting your long-term oral health, you can save on long-term dental costs because you're preventing things like fracturing your teeth and needing a crown or gum recession because your teeth are in a position that are not actively receding your gums. And so I would say, ask your dentist about whether or not your position of your teeth is affecting your long-term dental health. All right. That's really helpful. And then on the, what about on the cosmetic side? Are there procedures that you would say, I don't recommend this because the impact could be could be negative for kind of a, a small cosmetic improvement? So the cosmetic changes that people really seek out in dentistry are teeth whitening and basically having a whiter smile and bigger teeth through veneers. So whitening doesn't really have a negative impact on your teeth. If you have very, very thin enamel, you might get more sensitivity, but typically that sensitivity goes away after a couple weeks max. So I wouldn't worry about whitening too much. When it comes to veneers, you know, some people don't realize that it requires shaving down your teeth in a way that varies, the amount that is sh- that's shaven down varies according to the dentist that you go to. So some people will limit it to half a millimeter or less, which is great, but you should still know that that's irreversible. And that means you can never go back to not having veneers because enamel, the surface layer of your teeth does not grow back. And so people just need to know that it's, it's an irreversible decision. But then you don't have cavities ever. So there's that. You you do have, you actually can. So under- Oh, really? Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So basically when you have a veneer that's, it's for lack of a better word, it's glued onto your tooth. Basically you can have a, a gap or a margin in between your tooth and that veneer. And that's how you can get a cavity underneath that veneer. Okay. So- so don't do it unless you really, <laughs> unless, unless you really want to, and, you, and yeah. you know, and you know what is happening. Like if you are okay with the, with the fact that it's yeah. irreversible and you should also know that there is an alternative that's less invasive. So if you want, if you want a beautiful smile, you know, the least invasive way to, to get what we're all, what so many people look for, you know, white teeth, straight teeth, it's really just teeth whitening and orthodontics. So I would always say, try the least invasive way first which is straight orthodontics and, and whitening. And only if you're not happy, go for the irreversible cosmetic change of getting a full mouth veneers. What's your favorite whitening product? <laughs> so whitening is actually, um, it's the same thing in every single product. It's the same, it's the same compound. And so, okay. you know, it's, it really it doesn't matter, honestly. Like you can do the crest white strips at home. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of gross. It's like it takes some time, but it works. It's the same thing that's used in the dentist. The only difference is that your dentist uses a higher concentration of that product, and um, 
it can hurt more, but you're going to get, you're going to get faster results. So if you want faster results, go to the dentist. If you're not in a rush, you can do the two weeks at home whitening. Okay. So I discovered a toothpaste, a whitening toothpaste in Italy that I love and obsessed with, and I can't use anything else. And I'm really hoping that you say it's okay. Um, it's called Marvis. Do you know oh, yeah. Marvis? Marvis is, is great. It? Okay, good. I, I was like, I'm not sure. I, I don't really see it here in the U S so I didn't know if it was, um, something that we've banned or if people didn't like it, but it's been, it's been great for me. Uh, I highly recommend Marvis. It's a little expensive, but it's cheaper. If, if, if you're in Europe, get it there. <laughs> and it's a beautiful brand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have great branding. It's really fun. Well, Ingrid, thank you so much for your time today. This was a great conversation and I wish you all the best with two front. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Thanks for listening to this episode of the heart of healthcare. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, leave a review on Apple podcasts, follow us on social and tell all your friends to listen. The Heart of Healthcare is a product of Offscript Health. We are a healthcare engagement company built for patients and caregivers by patients and caregivers. Our executive producers are Matthew Zachary and Andrew McDowell. Our senior producer is Brianna Seely. Our host is Hallie Tecco. It is recorded, mixed, and edited by Brianna Seely. For advertising and media inquiries, email media at offscriptnot.com. That's media at offscript.com. For more information, visit offscript.com.